Alright, thanks for joining me for another episode of Tactics Talk. Uh, Tactics Thursday, hopefully, we try to make this a thing. At least, uh, probably not on a weekly basis. I got a lot going on, but anyway. So, we're going to talk about mortars today. Uh, mortars is probably a precursor to artillery selections, and that it kind of provides the same uh, type of uh, unit. Although, they do have different ways they work in the game. And mortars, I have to say, probably the if you're going to make a list and of all the things that I would pick to be auto includes, a mortar team of some nature would be on my list of auto includes. Uh, generally, there's three categories that are available to I think every army in the game. Some theater selectors limit certain ones, but uh, in the generic reinforced platoon, you've got a light mortar team. They're basically uh, 35 points at regular. 48 at vet. I think most nationalities have a two-man light mortar team. I, I wouldn't, if your army list is a three-man light mortar team, I don't think I would recommend it as highly as I would a light, uh, uh, a two-man team because uh, the small team rule, minus one to be hit, is very beneficial. You can take them at veteran for 46. Uh, so you're looking at basically right underneath 50 points, which is the same cost as a medium mortar team at regular. Medium mortar team at regular is 50. Inexperienced 35 and veteran 65. So you used to see a lot of uh, inexperienced mortar teams and you're seeing more and more at regular and even veteran. Uh, mainly because you can take a, well technically you can take a spotter with a medium or a heavy. You can still take one. You cannot utilize a spotter however uh, for a medium or a heavy unless you're regular or a veteran not inexperienced so you don't see them uh, you don't see nearly as many inexperienced mortars as you used to because people like to use that spotter which makes absolute sense so a uh, veteran uh, medium mortar team is at 65 and then a heavy mortar team starts at regular 65 and 84 points for a veteran if you take a spotter upgrade it's 10 points for a spotter upgrade and that's for uh, regular or veteran you don't have to pay 13 points for a veteran spotter because generally they just sit out on the board uh, however if you do take your team at a, a he at a veteran then the spotter would also I believe be veteran as well uh, so <clears throat> so those are the teams the way they work is the um, light mortar has a 24 inch range it can move and fire however it has a minimum range of six and a maximum range of 24, but you can move and fire it. Uh, the other ones you cannot move and fire, they're a fixed team. They usually have a minimum range of 12, but a maximum range of uh, for, a, for a light mortar, I mean a medium mortar, uh, I believe. A medium mortar has a, has a maximum range of 60 inches, heavy mortar, minimum of 12, max of 72. They have to always fire indirect. They cannot fire uh, direct shots, unlike uh, artillery pieces which we'll talk about in another segment and they use the templates light mortar is one inch template medium mortar two inch and the heaviest three inch so they're basically one size smaller than the equivalent artillery piece what's nice about these is that they're an infantry team so you can run them 12 inches uh, you can uh, that's pretty much the biggest advantage is, is that you can run them uh, they are susceptible to a sniper shot, though, because they're an infantry team, and it's not a, it's not a separate weapon, uh, unlike an artillery piece, which is a separate independent model and can be recruited by the crewman. A mortar cannot. If your sniper would shoot the man who is actually the mortar operator, you lose the entire team. So you have to watch out for snipers. Uh, the medium mortar has a crew of three, and the heavy mortar has a crew of four, and I've also placed a spotter out there for each one. So... Uh, when you take a mortar, you add it to your list. Uh, if you can deploy it on the board to begin the game, I, uh, you should probably do that. Uh, and then your sniper or your spotters will go down in the uh, scout phase uh, for deployers like snipers. So uh, generally, I take a spotter with my mortars. I've learned the hard way uh, of not doing that. It protects you quite a bit from snipers. And you can put your spotter out there to be the sacrificial lamb. So if, there's, if a sniper would target a spotter, you can always move and redeploy your mortar very easily. You can start a mortar in rough ground or in terrain, and it's not going to be hindered, kind of like an artillery piece, which when we talk about those, if you start them in rough ground, they're stuck there for the remainder of the game. 
So uh, I'm, I set up a series of, uh, I set up some targets here. Uh, so for target selection. So for the sake of our little demo real quick, we're gonna talk, we'll talk really quickly about light mortar. Pretty much the, the dynamics work for all of these guys. One nice thing about light mortar is that you can move it. So if we start this game in our deployment zone and you know, we kind of figured we're right up here in our deployment zone. We don't have, we don't have a, the danger would be they place a sniper over here and they can pick off our mortar team pretty quickly. Uh, I like to kind of put my light mortars either in a vehicle at the beginning of the game and drive them in or put them out on a flank. This is my personal preference. Put them out on a flank and try to bait that sniper into being somewhere where he's not going to affect the remainder of the game. You may get lucky, you may actually drop a light mortar onto the sniper's head, or you may be able to knock the sniper out with something else. Uh, starting it in the center of the board is another tactic as well though, because you have a, a, a lot shorter range than other mortars, and you can kind of just be in range of targets a lot quicker. So however you deploy it, just keep in mind it's susceptible to snipers. So fortunately we don't, we're not facing a sniper over here, so we're going to take our first turn and we're going to move our six inches we're going to move into this nice little piece of cover and we get into that little foxhole and now we have a 24 inch range so we know being in the game we can get 30 inches from because 12 inch deployment six inch move so we can get about six inches into the enemy's deployment zone if there's any targets in range we can go ahead and fire a shot right there once you're in a, a nice piece of cover like this you are a small team you're relatively inexpensive. Uh, so if they spend a turn or two of shooting a squad's infantry weapons at you, like machine guns or uh, rifles and whatnot, you know, just go down, similar to uh, other small team tactics, just go down, take the shots. Hopefully they're just burning their uh, order dice with their unit uh, when they could normally be doing something else. That's another kind of nice reason when I do run uh, light mortars I generally take them at veteran uh, I know it's getting to the same cost as a as a as a medium mortar it's just a different unit small team it, 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 it's a nice option the one inch template is not going to wreck an entire day for some infantry squad but uh, the good news is almost nobody goes down to a one inch template so if you do hit, if you're if they're fortunate, you can get like three guys in there and it's D2 pins. And then you're zeroed in and you start firing and they, it can be pretty brutal uh, to a squad. All right, so basically medium mortars operate in the same exact principle as a heavy mortar. Obviously heavy mortar is a little bit larger template, three inch. So it's a little more penetration plus three and it does the same amount of pins. Uh, and then you've got, so I've got that back there. So I've deployed it back here behind this tree and I put the spotter right out here where I had that light mortar team so the spotters there and then so you can use the spotters vision to see any, anywhere that he can see from so I've got my mortar can't see really anything behind this dense train but it also can't be seen and targeted so it's very safe in, back here I don't put it in the train because if you're in dense train you can see into it and see out of it put it right back behind there and I got my spotter over there now, if my spotter would get picked off, I can always redeploy my mortar. So, got that set up there. We're going to do some uh, target practice on some of these units. So, starting the beginning of the game, you need to look at your enemy's deployment and figure out what you're going to be shooting your mortar at in priority of targets. So, you can sit and look at these guys. And we've got, uh, from left to right, we got a Panzer IV the light howitzer we've got a pack 40 which is a heavy anti-tank gun behind that wall there's a uh, regular infantry squad back there behind that uh, rough ground there's an arm open top armored car and then there's a truck with an infantry squad in it so right off the bat you got to start trying to figure out what you need to do so a lot of times that also affects what you also have in your army list so obviously there's a road right there and we're concerned about that Panzer IV coming down it, but that has a light howitzer. So if we have a tank, we can utilize that road for our road movement, get up there, blast that Panzer IV in a tank-on-tank -tank battle, 
but however they've got a pack 40 sitting right there which so they'd, they'd have the huge advantage on us by double teaming us and a heavy anti-tank gun is not something you want to be driving down the road and facing the onslaught of it uh, uh, sometimes people get a little too early on firing they got to see an infantry squad there and they like to they want to get that boy they want to get that template say I say this guy deployed them all scrunched up and you're thinking to yourself man two inch template I can take that squad out in one shot may not be what you really want to look at firing turn one of the game so we pull the first dice or say we pulled a few dice and this is the deployment where, and we pulled one we want to shoot our mortar so out of these target selections, I, I, so another one's a truck. If we would blow up the truck, the infantry squad would come down out of it. They would also take the same amount of pins that the truck took. And then an the open top armored car, which is kind of nice because it's open top. It would take plus one on the damage chart uh, if we would score a hit on it. Uh, but we're looking for a six to start. Where mortars become effective, you can, obviously you can, if you can roll a six every time, uh, you're heavy and medium and artillery pieces can turn a game in your favor but mathematically you're going to get one hit per game by by relying on a six so what we want to do is increase our odds by in scoring a hit and that's trying to zero in on the same target there's two ways to do that one is to target a piece that can't be moved readily and the other well, and target a piece maybe that can't be moved at all. If they had started with that pack 40 in this rough ground, we know it can't move. So if it's important for us to dislodge it, that could be one of our priority targets. So if we want to try to get our vehicle down here, looking at what's available, I would say the pack 40. So it's a fixed team. If we start to zero in on it, even if we're not successful at hitting it, we're going to force the opponent to have to redeploy it. The turn it redeploys may be the turn that we can... Uh, capitalize and get our tank into a uh, nice firing position to either put fire on that or to put fire on the on the Panzer IV right away. So you're gonna to want to try to dislodge that that tank or that tank gun. So if we fired a, uh, a fire rod on there, our spotter can see it, our mortar can't, we can use the spotter. If the spotter would have pins on it for say a, a bombardment or something, it doesn't matter. You don't need to activate the mortar. You would only have to take an order test if the if the spotter would actually try to move. So one thing about that, you have one order dice to share for a mortar team with a spotter. You can assign it to the mortar or you can assign it to the spotter. The only turn you can move them both at the same turn is if you're coming in first wave, you're allowed to bring your mortar and your spotter in on the same order dice. They don't have to be together, but they come in on the same order dice. Other than that, you have to decide which one. I rarely ever move a, a spotter. Uh, so they, they, I guess in some games uh, if there's no restrictions on uh, capturing objectives that could be something you may want to move but if the mortar would be killed the spotter is immediately removed from the game so we're going to be placing our template down we're going to declare fire on this heavy anti-tank gun uh, I, when I modeled these guys I glued them all in place this was prior to templates now you see more people kind of modeling or placing them around it all the infantry models have to be within an inch of the breech of the gun though. So in all likelihood we're going to at least get three guys, probably four, but at least three if we would score a hit. Uh, main thing is trying to get that zeroed in and to uh, start putting pins on it. So we're looking for a, a six to start. We got three, which that's totally fine. Uh, it would be great if we got a six, but I didn't think that we would. So you put that... You put that fire on, you mark that you've fired at this. I usually put a dice next to my mortar. There's some nice templates out there as well. Uh, I know Rob over at History makes a, a nice little set that you can kind of keep track of which artillery piece is firing at what target. Uh, sometimes I get lazy on it, and mid-game I have to ask my opponent, what was I firing at? Kind of bad form. It's not great. It kind of shows you that you're not paying attention to what's going on. So there's that. We go ahead and execute the turn. So... Another thing, is to say we, we say we weren't worried about that road. We weren't worried about this. We were happy that he placed this here, and uh, because it doesn't really have a good field of fire, we were never planning to come down that road. We've got something to deal with this down the road. Maybe a Piat team or a flamethrower or something. If he gets close, we'll try to get him. So we got a dice, and he hasn't moved yet. 
I wouldn't recommend ordering a, 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 an attempt on this squad on this turn. And try to stall, do other things, because if you're trying to hit these guys on a six, you're going to be trying to hit them on a six every turn as they're moving. Uh, you see a lot of people, if you don't have a priority target like something like that, they wait for an infantry squad to move, so they do their advance, they enter into this rough ground, and this is the turn they're going to go ahead and call that shot in. The terrain doesn't make a difference, uh, doesn't help you from HE. We always need a six. So the goal, the point of doing this is now we're shooting these guys on a six and the next turn we're firing on a five, we can fire that dice before they move again and we've increased our chances of hitting by 16%. So we're gonna go for that six on this squad. We've got a four, missed. So we start the next turn and we're gonna go ahead and right away, we've got to remember that we're trying to target. We know these guys are going to move. Or we're, we're pretty sure that these guys are going to move. Uh, one, maybe they weren't planning to move. They wanted to get in this nice piece of train because we got an infantry squad over here. Now we're going to make them decide something to do. They're either going to move knowing that we're going to be hitting them on a five. Or they're going to stay in that nice piece of train and hoping that they can maybe... Uh, keep that piece of terrain for a turn and maybe do something else about our mortar or they're gonna when we declare the shot maybe go down which we've kind of suppressed them because if you if you would hit a squad normally we would hit all the ones under the template and it's d3 pins if they go down it's half the amount of hits it's still the same amount of pins so we're putting the pressure on this opponent to decide give up this nice piece of terrain uh, when he pulls the first dice or on this turn, now that we pulled the first dice, we're going to be hitting on a five. We're going to make, choose, make him choose to go down or cross his fingers so he can move and get out of the way. It's, a, it's When you're getting shot at, it's decisions like this that can change a game. Because you say, I'm going to chance it, and we roll that dice. Come on, dice. Oh, no. But if we would have got a hit right there, that would have screwed his entire left flank over. And that's, a, that's what you want to use a mortar for, is putting people in predicaments Say, damn, I was hoping to get the first dice and get them out of there before you were rolling on a five. I'm gonna go down. They go down, we missed. Start the next turn, boom, same thing. Priority your shot with the mortar if you can. Going for a four, so they were down and they missed. They have to take a dice out of the bag and go down. Start the next turn, same thing. I got the first dice again, I'm going on a four. Same predicament for this guy. He wants to get out of there, or are you gonna just keep zooming, zooming in on him? If you would happen to score that hit at any point, the priority level goes way, way up, and they've got multiple pins. If they're going to try to rally, if they're going to... It's tough to rally. It's tough to make that choice to rally uh, because you've got, say, three pins on you. You could you could pass, but then you're still sitting there, especially if you scored a two on them. Then you're going to be hitting on a three up. The likelihood of that unit surviving once you score a two up and you continue firing at it is very, very low. Um, so, uh, so let's say they go ahead and stay there and we're hitting them on a four and we're going to go ahead and roll that dice and for the sake of argument, let's say we got a four up. So we're going to go ahead and, and they went down, so we're going to go ahead and do our template, two inch template, we're going to look to our most advantageous spot, you only need to touch a base so we can get four. So we're going to roll four dice. We're at plus two, but they went down, so we're going to have that to two dice. So rolling two dice, looking for a two up, because we have plus two penetration, that would be two dead. With a six, no. So two would die, and it'd be D3 pins. D3 pins, oops, just one dice for D3 pins. Two, so just one pin. So, but now your mortar is zeroed up on a two up. It would always need a two up now. So now when it comes around to the next turn, this guy's really got to decide what he's going to do. You're zeroed in, he's only got a pin. You can try to activate and move, or he probably wouldn't rally with just one pin. So he's going to try to move. If he would fail, he would go down and you continue firing. If you get the first dice, you could fire him and force him into the same predicament. So one thing about mortars, you want to Pick what's a danger to you. This is what's dangerous. This squad moving up this thing, up this side of the board. Say there's an objective there or whatnot. You want to keep them suppressed. Maybe they've got uh, several light machine guns in there and they're a tough veteran squad. 
continue trying to put fire on the same target. Same with the, like the anti-tank gun. You start firing at it, you need a six, you need a five. Now you're looking at a four, 50-50 chance. It's really tough as that opponent to just take that. He was gonna wanna move that thing, and that's when you have the advantage. If you spend the whole game looking for a six up with your mortar, you're probably not doing it right. You're probably making, uh, you're kind of hoping at that point, and then it's not really the best thing to do. All right, so I keep getting interrupted by dogs chomping on bones, dogs wrestling with each other, and kids with a million questions. So I keep losing my train of thought, but I think we're doing okay. I do want to talk a little bit about striking uh, open top vehicles. Uh, so you got a truck here and an armored car. Uh, let's say you don't have much of a, you don't have anything really important to shoot at. And you decide, you know what, you're going to go for a quick shot or you're really worried about this armored car. So you know you're going to do the same process. Let's wait for it to move before we fire at it. So it's going to do its drive order or whatnot and fire some machine guns or whatever at whoever. So let's, let's wait for it to move first so we can try to hit on a five and then a six. If that's our target, let's try to increase our odds and not go for a six, a six, a six as it closes the gap. So it comes out, we're going to fire, looking for a five or a six this turn. And we're going to try to pull the dice before it and go on to five. It may, may not happen, but we're pushing that truck, or that armored car, that target to maybe go before it wants to. Maybe it's sitting there on recce. It's coming out here. Bait, we had already gone with our tank. And it's coming out here to bait our tank into firing at it so it could recce behind this uh, fence terrain and have us waste a turn. So we come out there looking for a six up on it. We never get a six. Trust me, it's been a long time since I rolled a six, needing a six on an artillery piece or a mortar. And so that's that's expected. So we put that marker on there to remind him that we're hitting him on a five next turn. We're going to start the second turn. So we start that second turn. He can wreck you away. It's not really going to help him unless he gets out of the way of that spotter. But if he does wreck you away, the, the rules are you always need a six if you haven't moved. And if the target hasn't moved, so the, we, we get, I'll even announce it to him, especially if we're concerned about our tank, him coming around the side, getting us in the side, or just trying to bait us into triggering off. A lot of people like their recce stuff to be used at the end of the turn. We're going to try to make him at least uh, have to contemplate it. Let him know, firing a mortar at that armored car. You, are you going to recce? If he reckes, that's fine. He's takes the dice out of the bag, he goes down, we don't have to worry about that thing coming around and popping us in the side. So, uh, if he doesn't, then he's taking a gamble uh, a little bit, on looking for a five up. So, come on, five up, six, there we go, baby. Score to six, real time, no trick camera footage. We put that template on there, doesn't really matter, there's no infantry squads nearby. If you're using a larger template, and I'll tell you, John Stentz is probably uh, one of the more proficient players of this. If you would have a squad out here and you put that template on, you just need to touch it and you can go ahead and get that on there. And it may affect this one guy, but it also, it'd be D3 pins on this unit as well. If you can uh, overlap onto another unit, always try to do that. So, got the hit. I'm going to roll our, our, uh, to kill and whatnot. So we've got plus two penetration. That's normally a seven armor vehicle and it's open top. We're hitting the top armor, so a six. So we need a four to glance. Now you don't get a bonus for open top on the to wound chart. You get the normal open top and then you also take the penalty of plus one on the damage chart. So, oh, another six. So we got a six. So that's an eight against the top armor nine. We didn't do. Uh, over, we didn't do a critical damage where we get to do two chart rolls, but we do get to roll a chart. Now it's it's a, a D6. Since he's open top, we get to add one to the result. A six, wow, I'm on fire. So either way, it's destroyed. Boom, we blow that up, and now we've just kind of really screwed his day. Let's pretend for a minute that that was this truck. We did the same thing, we waited for it to move. We fire at it. Now it doesn't have the option of recce, but we're trying to hit it on that higher result of a five up and we, and we do score the hit. Boom, we rolled the same result, the truck's destroyed. So now we'll just use this infantry squad as an example. 
let's say there was a matching one was in there. So we, we do, we roll the chart, we got the, the destroyed. So we still roll our D3 pins. God, that's another six, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, so it takes three pins. Uh, I don't have any pin markers next to me. We're, we're going to do that three pins on there. And they take the same that the vehicle took. The vehicle just was destroyed. If we would have got like an overwhelming, and we would roll, make sure you roll both damage results. If you get a crew stun and say the six, it would destroy it. Trucks are also considered open top. So we would have, with a six armor base, we would have done a critical on that. We would have rolled both. If you get an on fire, or if you get uh, an immobilized and a destroyed, well, not an immobilized because it hadn't gone, but uh, you apply all the results. So that would be maybe four pins on there. And then we roll a d6 wounds, three, so you roll three dice, there's two, and then three, nobody died, you know, being regulars. You don't add the penetration for the plus two, because the plus two was only against the vehicle. They're taking the residual, and then they have to go down. So they, they come out, take another dice out of the back, take one out for the dead thing, one out for that, put them on down, and they have three pins. So... That's, and that goes with pretty much any heavy weapon hit on a vehicle. That's how you kind of do it. So, all right, I think that's it about mortars. Uh, as always, uh, guys and gals, put a uh, comment in the comments. Uh, I've got a couple more things lined up. Uh, the comments so far have been very, uh, very nice. Uh, obviously, uh, I can't do everything all at once, but uh, I should be able to get a few more up here. In a pretty quick basis, I'm working on a few things, but uh, I just got back uh, from Snafu, and that was a great tournament. So I've been a little bit busy, but uh, all right, guys.